Hi, welcome to the legal wing of Perchance to Read, where I read one word or legal term and quickly break it down for trial watchers. As I say each time, there's no focus on any one trial in this series, just the trial words. And as always, nothing in this video is intended to be legal advice to anyone about anything. Okay, let's jump right in. But bear with me. The formal definition of hearsay can almost make you mad it's so convoluted. It's shortish, but not sweet. Whenever people ask and you give them the definition, they tune out halfway through, even when you tell them they're going to tune out and they swear they won't. They say, no, I swear I'll listen, I will. And then they still can't. It's too convoluted. So I'll give it to you, but the point of this video is to let you tune out for the definition if you want to, and then I'll just explain it. Quick point to remember as we dive in. Hearsay is evidence or wannabe evidence. It is the judge who decides what's admissible as evidence based on the constitution, statutes, and case law, and who determines whether the jury will see or hear any particular piece of evidence. If something is hearsay, the judge will make the call on whether the jury hears it based on, again, the constitution, statutes, and case law as it applies to that particular piece of hearsay evidence. Okay, here goes, ready? Hearsay is an out of court statement offered in court to prove the truth of the matter asserted in the statement. Okay, let's unpack it. So the first part is easy. Hearsay is an out of court statement offered in court. So something someone said when they were not in court is being offered in court during someone's testimony. Let's say John is on trial for bank robbery. A witness, Jane, sits in the witness stand and testifies to the jury that while Jane chatted with her neighbor, Bill, at a backyard barbecue, Bill said, I know for a fact that John robbed the bank. I saw him jump into his getaway car after it happened. So Jane offers in court Bill's statement about the robbery and the getaway car that Bill made out of court at the barbecue. So that's the first part of the definition. The next part of the definition. Jane offers that statement, Bill said John did it, to prove what is asserted in the statement. John did it. Nope. Jane offering in court, in the witness stand, Bill's out of court barbecue allegations that John robbed the bank to prove John robbed the bank because Bill said he did is classic textbook hearsay. That's not allowed. The Sixth Amendment says John gets to face his accuser in court with the accuser testifying under oath and subject to cross-examination and the penalties of perjury. Jane is bringing Bill's statement made outside of court into the court for the jury to then take the statement as a truth without John ever getting to confront Bill. Bill is the supposed witness of the robbery and accuser of John. John has a constitutional right to cross-examine Bill in front of the jury about his eyeglasses, intoxication, vendettas, credibility, attitude, IQ, whatever. The prosecution can't just slip Bill's witness testimony into the trial by using Jane saying she heard Bill say it. That's hearsay and it's unconstitutional. You're probably thinking, wait, I've seen a bunch of TV dramas and true crime shows too, where I've seen people testify as to what somebody else said. Wasn't that hearsay? Are you sure you're explaining hearsay correctly? But here's the thing. Actually, here are two things. One, if the testimony as to what somebody else said isn't offered for the truth of what they said, meaning it's not offered for the truth of the matter asserted in the statement, it's not hearsay. For example, changing our facts a bit, if Jane is out shopping and she eavesdrops on Matilda and Melissa talking, and the point of her testimony is that Matilda and Melissa were at the mall when they were mugged by John, and Jane tells the jury she heard Matilda and Melissa chatting about purses to prove she was close enough to hear them talking and therefore recognize them, as in, are you sure it was them? And not to prove any facts embedded in what they said about the purses or their plans for that night or where they were earlier in the day, that's not hearsay. She could say, I know Matilda and Melissa. 
I recognized their voices. They talked about purses. I heard them. It was them. They were at the mall that day. At this point, it comes down to whether the jury believes Jane's story about seeing Matilda and Melissa. The fact that she could hear them talking lends credibility to her having seen them and knowing that it was them. We don't actually care what they said for purposes of Jane's identification. So we don't care if what they said is true and we're not offering what they said as proof of the truth. In this scenario, John can cross-examine Jane to see if she's making it all up, if she heard right, if she wasn't mistaken, and so forth. So not every out-of-court statement meets the full definition of hearsay. Another example. We all saw them fighting and accusing each other of embezzlement. Could be offered as evidence that they argued and not as proof of the actual embezzlement. Or, she said she was sorry for being late to prove she spoke when she walked in the door and not to prove she was actually late. Maybe the defendant is claiming she had laryngitis on the day of the crime and couldn't have said your money or your life to the victim. So testimony that she showed up somewhere and talked to people is helpful. We don't care what she said. You get the idea. The person testifying in these scenarios is an immediate witness to the argument about embezzlement or the person speaking when they walked in the door and can be cross-examined by the defendant about their perceptions of what they witnessed. And the second thing about seeing people in dramas or real trials testifying to what seems like hearsay is that there are all kinds of hearsay exceptions that the law allows. For example, a timesheet showing that the defendant clocked in at their job three minutes from the crime scene the day of the crime and took a lunch break at the time the crime was committed is technically an out-of-court statement. Timesheets talk through what's printed on them to prove the truth of what's in the statement, whatever the timesheet shows as the hours work. But we know timesheets are admitted as evidence all the time. How is that possible? It's possible because a timesheet is a business record an employer keeps in the regular course of conducting business. And business records carry a certain presumed neutrality and therefore evidentiary reliability. The presumption is that a business will keep consistent, accurate records that are inherently unbiased for their regular quality. One timesheet is the same as the next except for the employee's name and the hours worked. So it comes in as a hearsay exception. On the other hand, if the timesheet is offered merely as part of a pile of papers to show that the office manager was disorganized, and not to prove what's printed on the time sheet, it's not hearsay because it's not talking about anything. Remember our convoluted definition of hearsay. Hearsay is something said out of court, brought into court to prove the facts contained in what's said, or I should say the purported facts. If the evidence isn't talking, it can't be hearsay. There are several hearsay exceptions. For example, if Bill is attacked, and is convinced he is about to die and he utters as his final words just before he dies, John attacked me. Jill will be able to testify as to what Bill said because Bill's words will be considered a dying declaration. Dying declarations are a hearsay exception since it is generally accepted that someone who is about to die won't or can't form the intent to lie in their final moment. Think about victims who call 911 and cry out about what happened and then die. Those calls can be admitted into evidence even though the victim cannot be cross-examined. There are several more of these exceptions. Some are so necessary that they aren't even considered hearsay exceptions. They're just not hearsay at all, meaning the statute just says this isn't hearsay. They're just excluded from the definition altogether. So you might be seeing exceptions or non-hearsay on TV and thinking general testimony as to what someone else said is okay. Likely you're seeing a hearsay exception or non-hearsay or you're witnessing, bad pun, an attorney failing to object to the testimony. That happens too. The truth is hearsay can be complicated. This video has barely touched on the surface by design because this video could have been much longer by a lot. There are countless more examples and exceptions I could have touched on, countless. This was just the bare bones minimum to give you a basic sense of what hearsay is. In the average law school, a professor may spend 
three weeks of a typical Tuesday, Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday class just on hearsay. It makes sense. There are all kinds of ways that communication happens even before the tech era. Just people talking, writing letters, eavesdropping, printing words onto paper and objects, talking to crowds, etc. Factoring in what someone said, how they said it, to whom they said it, why they said it, how it was perceived by the listener and maybe further shared with a third, fourth, or eighth party, and who is actually testifying to what, and balancing all of that with a defendant's right to due process can be a tangled mess. Statutes and case law have worked through a lot of what the United States Constitution requires, but in the heat of the moment of a trial, an attorney may not catch some hearsay that slipped into someone's testimony. And before they know it, it's five questions later and everyone has moved on. They also may let something minor slide if they don't want to appear to be objecting to every little thing. But it does happen that a highly competent, well-meaning attorney understandably just didn't quite catch it to object to it, even if it seemed easy to catch at the time or is caught in hindsight, because the realm of hearsay can be difficult to navigate. Despite all the hearsay exceptions and non-hearsay rules, the rules against hearsay are a mainstay of due process. Imagine if I heard Joe say that he talked to Robin, who said she heard that the defendant did it, or admissible testimony. Not allowing hearsay is part of the backbone of due process. And there you have it, hearsay. If this was helpful, please hit that like button. Links to my other trial watch words are above and in the description. And it bears repeating. Nothing in this video is intended to be legal advice to anyone about anything. Thanks for watching.